what we ultimately landed on was classical reinterpretations of modern pop songs for, for these larger ball sequences. And, and for me, that was all about when you watch the show, I wanted you to feel the same way the characters themselves felt on screen. <laughs> It's Kristen, and today we're chatting with the showrunner of Netflix's Bridgerton, Chris Van Dusen. Enjoy our conversation. You've worked on so many Shonda Rhimes projects throughout the years. What was it about Bridgerton that made you want to bring it to life as the showrunner and creator? I fell in love with these books from the moment I first read them. They had every element I always loved. They were funny, they were emotional, they were sexy, they were charming. And there was this, this delightful family known as the Bridgertons at the center of them all. Um, what really struck me was that this was a world of escape. And, and it's escapism was really what I was looking for at the time. And I think it's a lot of what audiences are looking for today as well. Now, how do you balance the story you're telling on screen with the story that's already in the books? There's going to be differences with any adaptation from, from the source material, I think. But, you know, fans of the books, I believe, are going to see all the elements they love on screen, too. The way the Bridgerton family loves each other, the way the, the, the siblings banter and joke with each other, um, the way Violet loves her, her, her children with, with that fear and, and how she would do anything for them. Um, and then of course, the, the entire Daphne Simon storyline, you know, the, their moving, sweeping romance. I, I knew going into this project that there is a rabid international fan base and, and these books are beloved and, and the fans feel passionately about these characters and these stories. So, so the, it, I think it provided a healthy amount of pressure and I wanted to get things right for them. At the same time, I wanted the series to not just be about the Bridgertons. You know, I, I added new characters, you know, it was about opening up the world for me. And we get to explore, you know, the world of the queen, Queen Charlotte, we're in Buckingham home and St. Regis palace um, quite a bit. And, you know, it is about, it's about a world. It's about an entire society. I'm curious about how the casting came together, especially because I think more recently we're, we're really starting to see a rise in people of color in different spaces in film and television. To see these, these stories being told within a period piece is so exciting to me. We knew this show had to reflect the world we live in today. You know, we're set in the 19th century, but I wanted modern audiences to relate to it. And I wanted modern audiences to see themselves on screen no matter who they were. You know, having worked in Shondaland for so long, ever since Grey's Anatomy, it's what we do there. We, we cast the best actors for roles in ways that represent the world we live in today. And we knew we'd have that similar chance with, with Bridgerton. Um, I think color and, and race are very much a part of the show. It's a part of our conversation, just like things like uh, class and gender and sexuality are. And I think a lot of that came from working with historians and, and collaborating hand in hand with the cast. What were some of your favorite scenes to film and, and what were some of the hardest scenes to film in this project? There was honestly nothing easy about the project. And I think that's what made it all the more rewarding at the end of the day. You know, seeing these episodes come together, I, I could not be proud of the show and of this amazing cast. There were definitely times, you know, we have these large set pieces, these large balls, and, and, and some of them were outside. And so we were up into, you know, we were in the middle of a beautiful English countryside at one point at like three, four in the morning, shooting this amazing outdoor sequence, um, which was incredible. But again, it was challenging. But I knew if, if we got that right and, and if it translated to screen, it, it would make it all, the, all, all worth it. Well, it was beautiful. It definitely transported me. And now the identity of Lady Whistledown is a big mystery throughout the series. So how did you kind of set that up? There were always two tracks uh, in the writer's room we talked about whenever, you know, dealing with Lady Whistledown. There was, you know, fans of the books who would who, who had an idea and a sense of, of who Lady Whistledown was. And then there were, you know, people, audiences that are new to the books and are new to this world and have never read the book and are unaware of, of those theories. Um, so it was always a about an interesting mix. We wanted to keep the mystery alive, but we wanted to still keep it fun and engaging for fans of the books. One of the things that I really loved about this show is just how you're in this period piece, but you also have modern music done in a different way. And um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what your inspiration was to kind of infuse uh, those modern moments with the more period piece types of moments. I love a good period piece and, I, and I'm a fan of the genre, but I think period pieces are often considered traditional and a little conservative. And with Bridgerton, I really wanted to make the period piece I've always wanted to see and one I hadn't seen before. So for me, that was infusing this amazing decadent world with, uh, with a modern sensibility and exploring these characters and telling these stories through a, through, through a contemporary lens. And I think that goes 
certainly for, for everything from the way we cast the show to the look of the show, things are very vibrant and fresh here. There's a little bit of effervescence and sparkle. Um, it looks different than your typical period piece. It, it feels different, you know, in the way we edited the show, in, in the way the show sounds. Music was, was definitely an evolution and we really landed on the music of Bridgerton in post-production, you know, when we had the show put together and, and we saw it as a whole and we tried a number of different things and what we ultimately landed on was classical reinterpretations of modern pop songs for, for these larger ball sequences. And, and for me, that was all about when you watch the show, I wanted you to feel the same way the characters themselves felt on screen. So when Daphne Bridgerton walks into a ball and hears this amazing song, you feel the same way at home and you're filled with excitement and, and energy. Awesome. Well, thank you so much and congratulations on the project. Thank you so much. If you like this one, you can check out more of my Bridgerton videos right over here and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.